Oh, thank you for sticking around this late, everybody. Um, my name is Matthew Stanley, and this is Phil Mortley. And uh, we've designed, uh, I designed a net zero house, a uh, net zero certified house for uh, Phil, who is more than Mountain Homes, and he's building it. Um, and uh, in our presentation today, uh, I believe the title is Finding Beauty in uh, Carbon Neutral Design. And something that was very important uh, in this house right from day one was that, uh, yes, it was going to be a net zero, net zero certified house, but it needed to be uh, beautiful. This is going to be their dream home. Uh, that was one of the, the instructions that uh, Phil and Victoria gave to me. Um, the day that they hired me is we want to build our dream net zero home. Uh, and I once saw... Uh, I'm just going to see if I can get these pictures scrolling through a little bit. Maybe. Okay, sure. Uh, I saw a presentation once uh, by Bruce King, who is sort of a, a guru in, in sustainable design uh, and construction. He said something that really stuck with me, and it was, the most sustainable buildings that we can build are the buildings that people love. Uh, and uh, the reason for that is that uh, buildings that people love, people will take care of and they will keep them. Uh, so, um, so the idea of finding beauty inside of uh, sustainable construction and sustainable design is something that is very important to me as an architect and is very important to this project. Uh, so that first slide was a picture of the site, uh, and it is a very beautiful site. It's in Shore Acres. It's between Nelson and Castlegar, uh, and the the site on its own is uh, you know it sort of demands that we uh, approach it in a, a very uh, sort of sensitive way, but also uh, uh, you know it's got a lot of opportunity for views and for sunlight as well. The first graphic I did for Phil and Victoria was this. Uh, and this isn't a, an architectural drawing in any way whatsoever, uh, but it was called a map to net zero building. Uh, and it was important right from the very first graphic that uh, not only are we thinking about this building very technically in terms of how are we going to deal with energy efficiency, what are the, the techniques that we're going to do to get there, but this graphic in, its, in itself uh, was intended to be something that was very sort of uh, visually interesting uh, and appealing. And what it does is it lays out the strategies that uh, we were going to do together as a team to get to the net zero certification. Uh, these are some schematic drawings, uh, very early sketches of uh, what was important in the project, uh, not only in terms of the design, but in terms of how the building would work. Uh, can you back to that? Oh, sorry. Uh, so obviously, looking at how the sun is going around the site and how these two structures, it's actually going to be a duplex. Um, right now, one of the units is under construction, and Phil will talk about that, but this was a very conceptual site plan, looking at how the two duplexes would relate to the sun, uh, but especially uh, to the views to the river. And this was a conceptual section of how uh, we're going to deal with the fact that there's going to be two structures beside each other. Uh, and in the net zero certification, it's critical that the solar panels are uh, operating properly. Uh, so the roof becomes uh, a very important part of the design. And it becomes uh, not only um, critical to the, the performance of the building, but it informs the design itself. And so. This is an idea about how one building would not shade the other one, even at the lowest sun angles in the wintertime. And these kinds of concepts start to filter their way down into the design of the building. Uh, so obviously you can see how the roof uh, becomes uh, an infrastructure for the, uh, for the solar uh, panels. Uh, but also it becomes a, a very architectural and very interesting element uh, uh, to uh, define the two units in the, uh, in the duplex, but it also becomes a very visual uh, and defining element in the building. Uh, 
Uh, and the idea here is that we put windows, uh, we concentrate the windows where they are needed for views, uh, but we don't put windows all over the building because it is a net zero certified building. Uh, obviously, we can't have windows everywhere, so we wanted to focus those in very specific areas uh, with views to the water. And this was a concept of being inside the space. Uh, not only do we want the building to function at a very high level in terms of its energy efficiency and energy production, but we wanted the spaces to be beautiful. We wanted the feeling of being in that space every morning uh, to be uh, uh, something that uh, was lasting and that you, people would really care for these buildings. So, uh, you know, we're looking at sectional qualities of creating raw spaces and then the, the windows themselves uh, with views toward the river uh, and toward uh, the mountains. And then that all sort of filters down into uh, what eventually the building uh, will look like. Uh, and it was very important uh, to get to this stage where we said, okay, we can create a very highly efficient building uh, that when you look at it, you don't immediately think to yourself, oh, well, that's got to be uh, you know, a super efficient building. It's, it's got a beauty on its own. Uh, there is glass where there needs to be glass. There's a beautiful uh, roof line. But all of those things are serving a purpose uh, and eventually uh, it gets to our net zero certification as well as to just creating a beautiful duplex for, for the owners. And on the other side of the building, we can see that you know we don't have as much uh, area where we want window on the west side, uh, but we're not sort of abandoning this idea of beauty and uh, there is, uh, sort of a concept here of having two very solid shapes, but those black shapes, if you look the next slide, don't have it here, but we're charring the, the wood so that even when the, the building is very solid, the, the siding has such a, a really beautiful patina that if you walk up close to it, it's literally iridescent. I think it, it might be the actual last slide in this project. Uh, and so this project is now under construction. Uh, it started construction in the spring, and uh, Phil's been building it through the summer, uh, and it's going really well. We've got a few slides here of the construction. I'll let Phil say a few words about the construction itself. So you'll uh, tap me through on the computer. All right, All right Grant. Um, so yeah, the design obviously was a big part of it, and then for me as the builder, um, building net zero is was originally a bit of a daunting task because hadn't done it before, and so there's so many different ways to achieve it, like exterior insulation or interior insulation, and just a lot of different decisions we made. So we went with kind of a more conventional building methods. We did a double stud wall on a two by 10 plate, and so that enabled us to transfer our like just basic building skills and then just use those same skills to create a net zero building. So there were some risks, but I really feel like that this build wasn't taking like a huge risk. We we're very confident, especially with Matt's designs, he put a lot of time into it, that we were gonna be able to pull this thing off. Um, in a lot of the cases, all that is required is, you know, maybe some wire walls to put in some more insulation and then high quality windows. And after that, a lot of the building techniques that we're using in here are the ones that, you know, we should all be using all the time. For example, you know, when you put your tie back on, you know, pound a bunch of staples in it and make a bunch of holes. It's an air barrier. That's what it's there for. But, you know, so many times on other builds, you just, I, you know, people slap, them, slap it together. So in this one, we, uh, you know, it's nothing too crazy. Just conventional fairly conventional builds, but just really taking time and care. So, you know, a lot of this looks just like a normal build would be. And that, I think, is, for us, was one of the more exciting parts of it, is that it was uh, something that we could really tackle. And I look forward to working with the other builders that are, you know, exploring these different techniques, and I'm sure we're gonna figure out better, more cost-effective ways. I mean, I thought this was, fairly cost effective, but we're gonna get better. And as long as everybody keeps working together, 
and you know, sort of open sourcing the ideas and the technologies, there's just really no reason we can't all be building like, better homes with just a little bit more care and effort. So for me, that was the big takeaway on this thing. Um, so yeah, you know, there's our solar panels going on. Kip, there's back there. That's him right there, the man in the flesh. Put him up. It doesn't. It looks flat from here. Yeah, it's not flat. One of the, that's one of the interesting like things about the roof. Who's bringing Kip Dredd? It's a 49 degree roof. It's a 1412. It's a, a line with the sun. And there's the there's the siding. Yeah, and so it's um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey, and you know. Just uh, try to figure it all out. You know, you can. The guidelines are there. The energy advisors are around. They can help us figure out uh, how we can hit those targets. And using the miracle of science, they can help us know whether or not we're actually hitting those targets instead of just taking a guess at it. And it's just, it's just not that hard. And I really think we should all be. Even moving even faster towards it and I know there's you know for some builders that have been doing it for decades and decades it can be like a little bit intimidating to change things and for new builders I think it's really exciting and I think there's a lot of knowledge to share between the generations and I think we're all gonna make the world a little bit better place by building better buildings Unless there's any more cool pictures, I guess that's probably it for me. custom-built house by uh, an accomplished architect so I would say for that we're doing very well um, sort of the CHBA would say prepare yourself for about a 10 to maybe 15 percent uh, increase of price um, that obviously would be offset by some efficiencies um, that you'll find in your energy bill and I think the hope is that over time that as the technologies and the builders get better, we'll bring that number down. And it'll just, it'll be, um, it should go on par. Is that 250 including your power plant? Yeah. So, I mean, that's including your 25 years of electricity bill. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 if it's on par. It's very good. That's very affordable. Then. Yeah. It's, You're saving you'd be very happy, money. you'd be very lucky to, yeah, a 250 for a conventional house is, Good. So and I'd then, say and we're then you, and then you keep paying for it. Yeah. To heat it. To heat it. To heat it. Mm -hmm. So with the savings that you'll eventually get over energy, um, I would say the major costs that I would associate with it that are different in this particular build is going to be the extra insulation, um, some extra two by fours for the second stud wall and the solar system. And other than that, you are kind of right on par with a regular house windows the windows are going to be expensive but for one even in a conventional house I think it's responsible to be built buying or using you know good quality windows regardless for I mean energy consumption is one thing but comfort alone is a good reason for that um, so I would I would think good windows should be in any good home and you kind of, sometimes you need to have a few less windows in the net zero house. So, you know, you can, maybe some savings. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Yeah